There's a massive culture of weekend sport in Australia. In the winter you'll find kids and adults playing soccer, rugby, AFL, netball. Every weekend you'll find parents driving their kids to one of these sports. But in summer, there's only one sport to rule them all, and that's cricket. Kids play cricket all the way from the age of 5 or 6, they play juniors cricket up until they're 16, and then they come to the big bad world of seniors cricket. Seniors cricket has players across all ages, all abilities split up into various grades dependent on their skills and their stats, and players commit their whole Saturday from 1pm to 6.30pm just to play a game they love with people that are sometimes strangers but often mates. And that's the beautiful thing about weekend cricket. You'll find people play for 30 or 40 years of their lives, giving up their Saturdays, making memories, creating friendships, all for the love of the game. So the core of this team, which is about six or seven players of us, have been playing for about 12 to 13 years. And um, about 10 years ago, everyone dispersed, played for other teams, or you know, basically dropped cricket altogether. But in the winter of 2013, I distinctly remember we were all talking about cricket um, at the pub, and the topic of getting the band back together was brought up. And we thought, you know what, why don't we do that? And so we started talking to each other and chatting about the friends in our social circle who could join the team. And about a month or so later, we had friends, siblings, workmates, all joining the team for what would be our first official season together as this team. And that first season we played in 2013-14 was to this date, a lot of the guys say, the best season a lot of us have ever had. The icing of the cake was that we uh, ended up winning that season despite being the first season together. And I remember just reflecting at that moment on the four or five seasons before where some of us had played together, where we were quite often wooden spooners coming last, and often had games where we'd barely scraped together to get seven players. And to come from there to winning the comp, you know, was really emotional. A couple of years later in 2017 we did it again in a higher grade and that season was quite the opposite. This season you know we dominated the competition that year, I think we only lost one game and again we had a great team that year with most of us part of that 2013-14 team as well. You know, every year we've played together as a team, we've made the semis at the very least and we've been really competitive but I think the biggest thing is the group of 10 to 12 guys just keep showing up for each other. It's easy to forget that everyone in the team has full-time jobs families, packed social calendars, but we all just keep turning up for each other during the week and on Saturdays. We're a bit more rusty with our skills and fitness, but you know what, that's part of the fun and we're really looking forward to that. Pre-season, usually the captain gives you a call and he says, hey mate, are you keen to play uh, the season ahead? And he has to do this for, you know, 11, 12 other blokes. People pick up the phone, they usually make a couple of excuses, but everyone knows they're going to play a whole season anyway. Um, so captain's got 11 players sorted. Um, we all come to a couple of training sessions, um, have a hit, have a bowl, and, you know, warm our bodies up uh, for the season coming up. Pre-season is a beautiful thing, brings the team together, helps them gear up for the season ahead. So we had a great preseason. Uh, we came together, I think shirts were handed out, hats were handed out. We had a season off, the team came together and um, yeah, we were looking forward to a season ahead in one of the highest grades that we've played. Every break after the game, so got, everyone's got a hand sanitizer, okay? Mm. Uh, sorry, sorry. Everyone gets one? So, no, 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 I got a thing I get a big bottle or something. Oh, so okay. the thing is, I'm gonna bring a, what do you call it, like a sheet of paper with a QR code. Everyone's gonna say, this is our home ground. 
My team's got to sign, I've got to take the other teams that they all got to sign in. Everyone knows that that game's got to sign to that yeah. QR code. Mm -hmm. Umpire's not going to take your hats when you bowl. So, so don't get up there with your hat. You can put it down on the ground, we, like the marker or something. If the ball hits it, it's not a five run penalty anymore. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Everyone yeah. throw your hats on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you should yeah. realize that. Yeah. Yeah. So, if it hits it's just dead ball. We should utilize that. Yeah. No, no more five run penalty there. Yeah. My name's Neil. Um, I am an all rounder in the team. I usually like to kind of bat in the middle, um, all kind of where we need to, and I usually like uh, bowling first change. I love to say I can bat like Tunduka, but I can't. Probably more like a shade of Freedy, I'd say. You know, I like to go out and have a hit and be more of a bowler. Um, that's the kind of player, I think. Yeah, I'd say shade of Freedy. Playing weekend cricket with this uh, team means quite a fair bit, actually. It's it's the glue that brings our social elements and all our mateship together. Um, it's not just about the sport, it's actually about being able to see the guys, being able to connect, and I think our connection goes beyond just seeing each other. And, you know, we have our wives and partners that all kind of get along as well, and now we've got their kids. Um, I think it's very important um, that we all stick, stick together as a group of mates as well, and this is what brings us together. For work, I'm in finance, so I run a finance team for a, a recruitment company. Um, but really, I just uh, work with one of my best mates at work, which is Neil. So uh, we basically talk about cricket for six hours and we work for an hour. Training's organised in our Facebook groups and our WhatsApp groups. There's usually a couple of messages that fire off on a Tuesday, trying to get the guys together on a Wednesday or Thursday afternoon or evening to come together, have a net, have a couple of fielding sessions um, before we all head to the pub and have a drink to bond. <laughs> all right, Freaky. All right. Next time you go out of the park, Freaky. Right. <laughs> it's an important part of our week because uh, usually this is the only chance we get to play and practice our cricket before we actually get to the games and also to bond together as a team as well. My name's David and I'm the wicketkeeper for our cricket team. I've been away uh, living overseas for the past five years. Um, coming back this year, playing with the boys again, making a team. Um, yeah, it's definitely something that I look forward to. Um, you know, these guys are like family to me, so yeah, in general. <laughs> <laughs> Being an Australian, living overseas, you you do see the different kind of style that people play cricket with. There's not not there's not like chatter or anything like that. Um, I do miss sort of having that close group of friends, like after the game, where you kind of do social things or just hang out, sit and chat and talk sort of thing. So yeah, I miss that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was an outfit. Was it? <laughs> I was, to be honest, like, I was really looking forward to playing cricket and I think during the pre-season I was training a lot with Kevin, just we went to the nets a lot and just sort of practiced our bowling, our batting sort of thing, just getting the hang of it. Um, so yeah, when we started to play again, um, making a team, definitely was excited and obviously a little mishap, like, um, you know, never charge you, but I guess that's probably rule number one now. At first, I just sort of thought, I don't know what happened, to be honest. I just fell over backwards, sort of thing, like my knee just buckled. I hurt my knee and I just heard something pop at that time. And I was able to stand up and walk. So I thought that was okay. Um, I thought it was just something and then, you know, um, as the weeks kind of went, it just kind of, the pain was still there. I was still able to walk the straight line. Um, so got it checked up at the doctor's sort of thing and um, um, assessment by a doctor was an ACL. So that was like really bad news at that time for me. It was just like, oh my God, are you serious? Kind of thing, like didn't even get to play sort of thing. And um, so, but she said, look, let's get an MRI scan. Going to this season, 
I feel like we haven't won the Premiership for a while. I definitely wanted to win. This year, I feel like I'm always someone who wants to go out there and win everything that I can. And that was my big aspiration, is going out there and winning this Premiership, because I feel like the season before that we played, we were, we were in a position where we were going to win. Um, Rain took that away from us, and I feel like this was a redemption season. And um, coming out here, I think that's what I wanted. After being told we're playing in our highest ever grade, we're there standing, you know, 20 overs in, and every ball is either falling just behind us or hitting the boundary, and we're about 70 for no loss. And I'm thinking, man, this is going to be a tough season. Um, it was even worse because I had an injury right before then, so I couldn't bowl. And I was bowling spin, and you just kind of feel helpless at that time when you're on the field because you can't do much. You go from a different level when you're playing B3 as a priority and coming into B2s. You know, there's different quality players. Um, you know, sometimes you get ex-grade players that come through and play part-time. And it's good, it's a good challenge. You learn from those players. You can actually you know, challenge yourself to be a better player as well and try and adapt to the game. I think those things you saw was quite prevalent in the first game and you know what, you never get in, it's, you knew that you were kind of strapped in for a season where you had to work hard for your wins and I think um, we need that sometimes. It's good to recover from that and I think the most pleasing thing from that game was um, how we kind of came back from a situation like that. Bowled him out cheaply but then seeing you know one of our good mates Jazzy um, bat pretty well, um, especially early on in the season. He showed glimpses of form before but um, he really took it to the bowlers and I know Jay had a big partnership there with him as well. The game I felt like we Probably should have lost that game, but Jazz turned that around for us. Jazz is a batsman that c can really change a game from any position, whatever the game you, you're playing. He may come in at four, he may come in at eight. He, he's got the ability to change the game, and he did that in, the, in our first game, and I think that was really quite good. Well done, boys. Well done, Jazzy. I think if we had a really good day, you come off smiling and laughing and ready to get the beers and then have a good chat and talk about what's you know what good happened. Um, I think if you've had a bad game or a long day that you didn't anticipate, you're going to trudge off and there's a lot of post-match debriefs and a lot of opinions um, that come out during 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 the game and probably after the game as well. Yeah, it's not really what you always want to have during a beer, but you know, I'm also a contributor to those two as well, so I put my hand up and say that. But I think it's always good for everyone just to look back and go, well, I just spent six hours here. What did I do right or what did I do wrong? How can I bring it, uh, you know, improve it next week? So uh, I think we all sit around, have a chat, reflect back what we can do. It's all, you know, it's all the elements of not just making it social, but making it constructive. Um, so that's what tends to happen. We do a debrief or chat or laugh. All right, Jazzy, how'd you feel today going out there scoring a quick 35? Oh, good, bro. Yeah? What was your game plan going out there, mate? Score a 49. <laughs> oh, you fell short, but are next week still out there, mate. The whole game's out there for you next week. You're going to put a big total on, eh? Can't wait. Take us home? Take us home. Day one, yeah, overall solid, some solid start to season. Um, you know, like, look, look, we give credit to these guys that are good batsmen on the top order, so... Um, yeah, it did take a while to get him out, but once we did, we, just, yeah, we persevered and then That's got the rest of that one by one. And yeah, the boys did well. Yeah, it was a bit rushed in the field, but you know, in the end, we had some good catches, good fielding, and the bowling was good today. I'm proud, proud of the boys. Cricket's not your usual soccer or footy where it's done in about 45 minutes or an hour. It's a whole day affair. You know, you're going from about midday till about six or seven. So we usually play on the Saturdays, the senior senior grade play on Saturdays. And we go through that format throughout the whole year. So obviously we play one days. We've also got introduced T20s now. We have two days, which is our version of a test match. How far do you think we are from training? I'll say five more minutes. Five more minutes. <laughs> five more minutes before course. we kick them out. What happened on the weekend, Philip? Um, Give us an update on the game. 
They were traveling well, one for 110 odd, and uh, we managed to get them all out for 160. So the last nine wickets went down for 60 runs. So uh, I think the team is happy about that. And right, right now we're four for 80, 80 something. So we're halfway there. So looking to hopefully the rain stays away this weekend. Nice one. If the yeah. rain stays away, hopefully we have a good chance. That. Weather does play a big role um, within our season. I think when you're playing from a, you know for a six month period, some games up front, whether it's been rained out and stuff where you could have won, does end up to the tally, and then you may end up missing out in the semi finals, which has happened to us a few times um, in the last couple of years. Yeah, so um, we've got the update. So it's just a partial tear to ACL and um, MCL. So it doesn't require surgery. So it's good. Uh, the popping noise was my kneecap dislocating and relocating itself. I thought it was just a bad shot. <laughs> it was actually a good shot because it went actually out, out of the nets. Nah, but um, so the doctor said it's about five weeks, six weeks recovery, and then a bit physio, but I should be alright. Luckily enough, it was just it wasn't a uh, a ruptured ACL. It was just a slight tear to the ACL and MCL. Um, so they said that was going to take about uh, two months, two to three months to heal. So that was obviously better news, sort of thing, and. Yeah, I had to do a bit of physio sort of work and yeah, I just wanted to come back as soon as I can. So, uh, at least uh, at the end of the day, it was good news, something like that. 58 to get. Hopefully, get back on, slowing down. Yeah, all right, getting the confidence back. Yeah. Struggling a little on the offside, but... You played a good shot on the offside, man, which is good. Yeah, it's just be careful with the full ones, that's all. Yeah. You know, rain sometimes can work in your favour or it doesn't. And I think for us, we're a team that usually plays and performs in the second half. And a lot of times the winds don't really, you know, we don't accumulate a lot of winds up front and then the rain really comes, becomes a third kind of team or third player in, in the mix for us. Um, remember last year, a few times we've, we've come up to different seasons where we've taken out the team coming first and um, we've come from like last position coming all the way up to semifinals and we're in a winning position come day two, it rains. And you sit there and you go, you look back, oh, we could have done this, we could have done that differently, but you know, that's the impact of rain. So in cricket, you just can't base yourself on thinking you're a good team. You have to really be consistent throughout the full year. All right, Willie, what's just happened, bro? So we just had a rain break. Uh, it's dry out now, so we're back on. We're 1-4-4, one, 1-16. Four, four, one, Got about another 50 left. runs to score. Hopefully it doesn't rain out. They're saying it might storm in about an hour or so, so we'll see what happens. And it was actually quite good um, seeing Jazz score some runs as well because I feel like he's He's been due for a lot of big and consistent runs, so it was, for me it was quite exciting to go and see that first game. Cheer boys, is that 50? Yeah, Jazzy! Yeah, Jazzy! What up, Jazzy? Crucial. Okay, we might be on here for a big season, so, and he batted well in the rain. I remember seeing rain just dropping all over the spot. This is one of the things that probably people don't get about cricket because when it rains when you're playing soccer, the games still go on. Um, same thing with rugby and a lot of other sports, but cricket really gets affected by rain because you don't want to ruin your bat. The pitch gets damaged and it just becomes harder to play. The ball gets soaked and becomes like a bar of soap. 
and so it was just catastrophe um, for a cricket game. Well, it fell short by 30 runs, you know, it's probably a couple of overs in Jazz's books and it, you know, it was unfortunate we weren't able to continue on and take a first win um, uh, of the season, but yeah, it's all right. Hey Jazzy, cheers. Good innings, mate. Thanks, Well, mate, what'd you get, 70 odd? I reckon. We'll find the score book somewhere. Until then, get the beers filled. I would love to have got that win, especially knowing the last season, those losses up front in the season cost us down the track, and I think grabbing a win would have been good. Um, you know, it was good that everyone else in that round didn't score any points, which is okay, everyone's on an even field, but I think coming that close, it would have been really good to have that edge coming in early on. One of the ways we socialise is uh, cracking open a beer or a soft drink after the game. Digest the game that we've just had and at the end of the day, we love playing hard on the field, but we love coming off the field and sharing memories and having a laugh. Weekend cricket team set up, you'll find people of different occupations, different walks of life, different faiths, different cultures, and our team just goes beyond cricket. Uh, we love investing in each other's lives, love caring for each other. And you'll often find conversations outside of cricket. And that's really the beauty of a park cricket team where people are there for more than just cricket. People are there to really you know, build each other up. Um, they're there for mateship. And really we're all just there to support each other and bring the best out of each other, not just on the cricket field, but off the cricket field as well. The amazing thing about park cricket, park cricket is that you have many different teams all over Australia and you've got different cultures, different sets of groups, different kind of demographics, but you've always got the same characters within every group and I think that's where a lot of people can relate with um, park cricket. So, you know, everyone's got their, you know, the sporty guys, you've got the guys that take it too serious, you've got the guys that don't at all, you've got your drinkers, you've got your jokers um, and everything like that. So I think team culture is, is quite important and, but it's also very consistent throughout no matter what part of Australia or the world you are playing cricket. Um, you can definitely relate to many different characters that you see in, 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 a, in your team. It's a long season ahead with about seven months of cricket. We're striving hard for that one goal, which is a premiership. There's a lot to do for us. We're not the same team as we were six years ago. It's a long road and a long journey ahead, but we're all in this together. We're going to have a crack this season and hope to make it all the way until the end as a team.